Welcome everyone back to Beat the Game. This is Steve and today we're going to talk about Nebula and understanding the mechanics. So that's right. We're going to take a look at all the signature cards and also we're going to give uh, kind of our feedback on priorities and what to play, how to play it, and you know what works the best. I've had a chance to play Nebula a bunch of times and she is very, very cool. She's a I, maybe not a, an upgraded Black Widow, more or less. She she works differently, but she has a lot of similarities where she wants to put a lot of stuff on the table, uh, which is kind of cool. The only thing is you don't actually get to choose when the when the preparations go off uh, or how her techniques go off. You just they just go at the beginning uh, of the hero phase, so that's cool. We'll also look at all the new justice cards that are presented and all the bonus cards, and then we'll also look at her uh, nemesis set and her obligations. All right, so without further ado, let's take a look at Miss Nebula. Well, Nebula is an outlaw. She has a recovery of three. She has the uh, outlaw trait. She has a, a passive ability that says cybernetic upgrades. It is a response after you play a technique upgrade, draw two cards, limits once per round. So this is really, really bonkers because she starts with a hand size of six she has nine hit points, which is okay, but you play one technique and then you still have a hand of six because you have to, you have to spend two cards to, to play a card. So basically you get that first technique for free. Uh, so that's super good. So basically you pay one, you pay two to draw two, which is kind of good because it kind of helps filter your deck. So you do want to have some of those techniques in hand when you're looking at your opening hand. Now let's take a look at her hero side. She is a 2-2-2, two, 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 which is super solid all across the board. A 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Uh, the best heroes have kind of those stats because they're just all around good. So you can't go wrong there. Uh, she is a guardian, part-time or full-time, whatever. Uh, and then she has combat protocols. So this is a force response. So you don't have a choice. After your turn begins, resolve the special ability on each technique upgrade you control. Then discard each technique upgrade resolve this way. Now, what's cool, it's not at the beginning of the hero phase. So when it if you're playing in multiplayer, it's actually going to be when it's your turn that all this stuff is going to trigger. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's kind of take a look at our signature cards. All right, we'll put Nebula up here in the corner here. Let's talk about uh, resource generation. So she does have a resource card, which is always the best. Uh, Nebula ship is a two cost support card. It is a vehicle that says resource, which means you can use it in Alter Ego or in Hero Form, which is super cool. Exhaust Nebula Ship, generate a wild resource. The fact that it's wild is perfect. This is a cheaper Helicarrier, uh, Queen Carrier. So right there, it's super, super solid. So for two, this is definitely a nice priority card. Uh, any character that has resource generation is a card you want to put on the table, obviously for economy reasons. So. This is going to be a nice priority number 1.51. 1. It's not super crucial, but it is a good thing to go. So you can have a priority 1.5 to 2 on this. It's not an automatic, I need to put this on the table. All right. Now that was the that, that was her vehicle. Now let's take a look at some of her um, techniques. Most techniques, they come two of a set. So there's always two of the same, except for two of them that are individual. And we'll see in a minute why. All right, so let's take the first one, the Wide Stance. So there's two copies of this Wide Stance. It is a one cost upgrade. Now, most of them will be one cost because again, they're cheap, they're upgrades, and we like that. While Nebula is in hero form, reduce the amount of damage she takes from each attack by one. This is really, really powerful, all right? So the fact that all of the attacks, so the villain attacks, minus one. The minions attack minus one. If you happen to have both on the table, that reduces all the damage by two, which means you can just be there and just look at the villain and just be like, ha, 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 and just laugh in its face. All right, so that's pretty, pretty solid. Now, uh, the special on this one is pretty awesome too. It's look at the top three cards of the encounter deck, discard one and put the other back in in any order now what's amazing about this is you get a protection so you get this reduced damage and then you get heimdall's ability for one for one 
<laughs> There's no power creep in this at, at all. So yeah, so wide stance is extremely powerful um, for an, uh, a preparation. I think this should be one of the first ones you should play. If you have it in your hand, definitely play that because that will help you stay alive and it will also help you control. And we've talked about this before in my videos, knowing what's gonna be happening during the villain phase in solo play bonkers in multiplayer I was like okay it's gonna be an attack of one it's it's got a boost of one a boost of two we know what's happening uh, so it's still good information to have so the fact that she has that is very very solid so this is definitely uh, a good priority uh, one to have uh, now let's take a look at the other one that she has two copies of weapons master now weapons master again is a one cost upgrade it is a technique, and while she is in hero form, Nebula gains Retaliate 1. Again, if you have two of these, it's Retaliate 2. They stack up, so that's really, really solid and can be really combined well. And we'll look at that in when we do our like a little deck ideas for these guys. So even in protection, uh, if you're at full strength and everything, you can actually have a Retaliate 3, which makes her a really, really good blocker as well. And then she has a special on this, which is an attack. Now, uh, just remind, remind yourselves, it is an attack. So if the villain has, if there's a guard, you have to punch the guard. If the villain has retaliate, you will take retaliate. It is an attack. If you are stunned, the, this will just fizzle. So this is the only question I'm not too sure about. Uh, it's gonna trigger the, uh, the attack and you're just gonna lose it. It's gonna get discarded regardless if you are stunned. It's gonna remove your stun, which is kind of good. Uh, and that's pretty good so and it's four damage to an enemy anywhere you choose so that's very cool except if there's a guard you can't attack the villain so that is another super solid one weapons master now i won't lie the next one is definitely my favorite cutthroat ambition because after i read this card i'm like oh man there's so many combo potentials with this one cutthroat ambition is a one cost upgrade again uh, technique when nebula is in hero form her attacks gain piercing and overkill so not her basic attacks her attacks in general so when i'm going to be building her in aggression like if i do a lightning strike uh not lightning strike a um uh into the fray and i deal six damage and then i overkill that overkill is not only removing threat but it's also dealing damage to the boss bonkers bonkers so his attacks uh those attacks gain piercing and overkill it's so solid and i i don't know if you if you've been playing this and you, if you haven't if you didn't realize this but if you didn't realize it realize this now this is her strongest by far of her preparations because being able to give every attack piercing and overkill is money if you have two, don't play both of them, play the one. Because obviously the special is super solid, which says remove three threat from a scheme, which is great. But the fact that you, this is a card that you wanna keep. Having your, uh, having your hero have piercing and overkill on every attack is amazing, all right? Piercing and overkill is just crazy. So this is your priority one. This is by far your best technique or slash preparation by far by far this is the one that's going to get you there especially in aggression all right so we're going to put that one away here and then let's take a look at the other two uh the last two that she has uh unyielding persist uh, persistence is a one cost upgrade technique and while you are in hero form you get plus one thwart plus one attack and gain stalwart now that's super fun because uh, while you're in hero form, you gain style ward. So if you ever you get stunned or, or, or confused by the villain, you flip down to alter ego. Okay, you're in alter ego. You play this, draw two cards, flip back up. Oh, all of a sudden you're style ward and all those nasty status, status cards go away. Boom. They just fall off. Such a dream. All right, so that's super, super solid. While in hero form, uh, the plus one, plus one and stalwart is great. And then when you resolve the special, uh, you give her a tough status card. Man, what can you say? This is really solid card. This is another priority uh, one card, all right? Being able to get the tough is fantastic. And then finally, the last one, which is evasive maneuvers, 
It is another one cost upgrade technique. While in hero form, Nebula ignores guard and patrol keywords uh, and the crisis icon. Guard, patrol, and crisis. So you want to thwart, you can thwart wherever you want. You want to attack, you attack wherever you want. This is really, really cool. Uh, and then the special, choose to either stun or confuse an enemy. Now, something I want to talk about is when we resolve. All right, so this is something that's super important. Okay, so let's say you have this one, this one, and this one on the table. All right. Uh, don't, don't resolve this one first. Resolve uh, the weapons master first, where you can just deal and ignore guards. Deal it on that, and then go on the guard. Ignore, because this is still in play whilst this resolves. But if you get rid of this, then you don't get to ignore the tough and the... Uh, so this is something I noticed while I was playing my first game with her. I was like, oh, wow. That's that's kind of cool. Like a, a, that's a nice, cool little combo that you can kind of keep evasive maneuvers, and you you resolve this one at the end, and then you know you can deal your attacks wherever you want, which is very very solid. So there you go. Just make sure that when you do resolve the effects, uh, that you resolve them uh, in the right order to be able to get the maximum amount of benefit. So that is eight uh, techniques, kind of like Black Widow had the eight. Uh, preparations in her uh, in her kit. All right, uh, was it? Did she have eight? Yeah, she, I think she had eight, right? Okay. Now let's take a look at some of the other cards that she has in her deck. She has two copies of Combat Ready. Now again, if these names sound familiar, because that is exactly the cards that she has in her villain set. So we're just just you know, it's just like yeah, not too much research was done into changing that up because why? It's just a mirror match. So that's pretty pretty fun here. So Combat Ready is a zero cost event that you can only do in Alter Ego. Choose one. Shuffle up to two technique upgrades from your discard pile to your deck. So that's really good to recycle. And then the other part is discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard a technique upgrade. Put that upgrade into play, then resolve its special ability. And that's what's super solid here. The fact that you can resolve the special ability. So one thing I would suggest, this if you need a turn in Alter Ego and you see like how many tech, like all the techniques you have, you see, oh man, I could really use a Confuse on the uh, on the on the villain right now. Cool. All right, Confuse the villain. Is it in there? Yes, it's still in there. I haven't seen that one yet. Let's take a chance. Oh man, there's three thread on that scheme, man. I really wish I could get rid of it. Let's see. Let's 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 try to see if we can find Cutthroat Ambition and put it into play and resolve that special ability. That's what's so good about it is because it resolved. It, you can bring two back to your to your deck or you can find one and resolve it special. So regardless of which one it is, the four damage or 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 the thwart one, I think I think the three thwart and the uh, the fact to give a stun and confuse are the two best ones. I those are the ones you kind of want to wish to have all the time. But if you don't, anyway, they're all pretty good. Even the one that says like the wide stance that you can kind of just uh, discard and just figure out what the villain's going to be doing on his turn for solo is just really really good so combat ready don't shy away from this card do not discard this card I, play it like just discard cards from the top of your deck and just until you find a technique and you know pull the trigger do the lottery man it's it's a fun way to play all right so combat ready definitely a great card to her pool and then finally her last event and she's got three copies of this and this is very cool so what you want to be doing is when you uh, when you have this lethal intent, you want to make sure that you get it while you are in the alter ego form. So when you flip the hero form and you have all your techniques, you have enough resources to play the lethal intent, which is X. And X is the amount of techniques that you want to make trigger. So if you have three, you can trigger three. If you only have one, well, you can pay X is no more than one. You can't pay five and do the same one five times. So you got to choose the different ones. So, but the X, Lethal Intent, Event, Hero Action, and again, this one is a Hero Action, and the uh, Combat Training is an Alter Ego Action. So the Hero Action says, uh, choose up to X Technique Upgrades you control and resolve each of their special abilities in the order of your choice. Now that's why it's super strong, is you can kind of play around with the order if you have more than one. And you have three copies of this, now, if you're unlucky, I know in my first game, I was a little bit unlucky with these. I was getting those in my hand uh, while I was in hero form. So most of the time it was a dead card, but when you get them, when you are flipped down, oh man, 
and then you flip up and then you can remove threat, get it tough, do that. That is a super feel good moment uh, for you. All right. And finally, let's take a look at Gamora. So Gamora here is a three cost ally with two thwart, two attack, three health. She is also a guardian ally. Response, after you play Gamora, choose a technique upgrade you control and then resolve its special ability. <laughs> what more can you want? And like, boom, you need the villain to be stunned? He's stunned. You need the villain, uh, you need to see what's coming? Look at the, what's coming. As long as you have a technique and as long as you are in uh oh you can even oh yeah you can even trigger this in alter ego which is super solid so you can stay in alter ego bring gamora have the one that says he's stunned or confused and then just get a free turn in alter ego and then have gamora there it's very very solid all right so that's it for her kit uh which is very very fun very solid again very black widow-ish uh in the in the forms of what it kind of looks like uh but her events are extremely powerful if you can get the timing right. And that I think what's all about Nebula and I think that's what the the, uh, the, the developers really want to focus on is timing. Because timing, sometimes she's good, timing, sometimes she's bad. So there you go. So the timing will, will have a big impact on this character and how good you think she is or how good she plays. All right, now let's look at some of the cards that she is bringing to the justice aspect uh, because it, it was a while since we've seen a Justice character, so I'm very happy because I felt like Justice was kind of falling behind in cards. Uh, and now we have one way or another. Man, this is a superb solo, solo, maybe two-player card. All right, this is solo play or two-player. This is a fantastic card. Three to four-player, yeah, you might get a good... You, if you have a really good, solid Justice player who can remove a lot of threat... But fetching a side scheme, let's read what it says. One way or another, zero cost event, max once per round. It says hero action, search the encounter deck for a side scheme. Reveal that side scheme, draw three cards. So there you go. So so for one, so basically it's a draw two. All right, so get a side scheme to draw two. Now, if you combine this with, uh, you know, playing against the uh, uh, some scenarios like the Badoon guy or the ship, What's it called? The ship pirates or the 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 ship modular set there? Uh, what is this called? Space command. There you go. So you can actually use the Milano and then get remove the threat and then you get basically a free draw two, uh, which is kind of good. And then you also have, you know, some of these uh, modular sets have like these side schemes with like two, two, uh, two per player. Those are really good. Anything higher than two or three per player. Be careful, like it's it's good, but unless you can, you know, for sure you're going to be able to manage it. Uh, it's a good, like I said, it's a good card until it's not. <laughs> also, if there is no side scheme in the encounter deck, so this is another one you got to pay attention to the encounter deck. If there is no in, uh, side scheme in the encounter deck, this card just goes kaplutsis and you just reshuffle. All right, so unfortunately, yeah, you have to find it not from the discard. From the from the deck, so it's a great card for justice. It's a way to card uh, to draw cards, uh, get some card draw, and you know, getting side schemes in justice. If you are playing solo justice, you 99% have control over the game, over the tempo of the game. So one way or another is a fantastic addition to that. It's just draw more. It's just more draw cards, and in justice, man, it's solid. So this is a great great new addition to the justice uh, pool. Next one, Brains Over Brawn. Now, I really like this card uh, with a, cer a certain amount of characters. I love, I love the Spider-Man art on it. Oh, man, that was, I think that's one of my favorites. Uh, but uh, two for an event called Brains Over Brawn, so a real cost of three. It's an attack, hero response, attack. After your hero makes a basic thwart, deal damage to an enemy equal to your hero's thwart. Now, what I like about this is uh, with Nebula, if she, in her hero kit, she's got the the plus one plus one, and then she's got the the other thing that can um, heroic intuition, and then she's got which I forget which one it is. There gives the plus one. I think it's the unyielding, yeah, unyielding persistence. So she can get up to four. So she can thwart for four, and then for two, deal four damage uh, for thwarting, which I think is pretty cool. Obviously, there's better attack cards, but uh, with certain characters that can get up the what's the base? 
I think uh, Wasp has a Thwart of four. And it's, uh, so she can go up to four. Rocket Raccoon can go up to four. So there's a few characters that can get up to four. So I think that's pretty solid. I don't know if four is the maximum I've seen. With Jessica, jo uh, Jessica Drew, if you can do it and get up to five, man, that's even better. So Thwart for five, deal five damage for two. It's very, very cool. So again, it's only gonna be good with a few characters. Obviously a character like Ms. Marvel, uh, or Hawkeye that has a thwart of one. It's gar it's, you're never going to see that in those decks. But, you know, these two-cost characters, even Captain America can be really, really solid with that because if you happen to get his uh, double uh, uh, heroic intuit, I forget what it's called there. I forget the one that for zero that gives him plus one thwart. And then you, you can thwart, bang, and deal some damage. So, again, it's going to be good with a few characters. Not all of them, but it's a good addition to the card. It's damage injustice. That's all I need to say. It's a damage card for Justice. Now, this is a super solid card here. Uh, justice Serve, uh, love this. A one cost upgrade, Justice Serve, that you can play under any player's control. Now that is very fun. Max one per player, obviously. And it says, um, one cost upgrade, Justice Serve, is a hero response after you thwart and remove the last threat from a scheme, discard Justice Serve and ready your hero. So this is super solid. You can remove a tiny side scheme that you wanted and then you can focus on the main scheme. So if you have a crisis icon, you could get rid of the crisis, ready, do it again. Again, if you can combo this with like uh, making an entrance and stuff like that, you can heal. There's all these super cool combos that you can do now uh, with uh, just to serve and readying your hero and getting plus toward and then with the brains. So there's so much things that you can explore now with the justice uh, aspect. Uh, and you can really, really have some fun with this. All right, so Justice Serve, definitely a mega solid addition to the uh, Justice Pool. All right, now we actually have a couple more allies to present. So we more Justice allies, awesome. So we have Eros or Eros, and maybe the Spanish god of guardians. All right, so two cost ally, Eros is two thwart, one attack, both taking one consequence damage. He is also a guardian, so that's also cool. If you're playing nowhere, you can add some more guardians to your uh, guardian builds. And the fun thing is you don't need to be a guardian to play him, so that's also very nice. Uh, two, two health, he has a response. After you play Eros from your hand, you can confuse a minion for each mental resource you use to pay for him. So uh, depending on what scenario you're playing and what modular sets, you know, some of the, some, some villains have some really nasty uh, minions that thwart for a lot. I'm thinking, I'm looking at you, Modoc. I'm thinking of, I don't know, Sandman, Scorpion. Uh, what's the other guy? Tombstone. There's a bunch of them, even the Goblin Knight. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of these minions uh, that have the, the two thwart that can be really, really dangerous. So with a, f a fun guy like Eros, you can just go mental, 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 boof and get rid of a bunch of those and then not being too afraid to flip down and then not worrying about scheming out because these guys are all confused. <laughs> so very cool arrows, very cool ally for justice. Like him very much. And I think Wraith here is the number one ally I think that uh, has been popped up. Uh, I've been seeing comments about the, is it her, she, Zach, Dell? I don't even know if it's a guy or a girl, whatever. Wraith. He's got, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'm getting confused because of the lightning coming out of everything there. It, it looks like long hair, but it could be a dude. I Who knows? Who cares? All right. Three cost ally, Rate. A, he is an ally uh, with the guardian trait. He has one thwart, three attack, which is pretty solid for an attack. Uh, he takes one consequence or two consequence when he's attacking. He has three hit points. He is a guardian as well. Again, that you can play in any deck because you do not need uh, you do not need to be a guardian to play him. Hero interrupt when a boost card is turned face up, you could exhaust rate and deal a damage to him. Cancel that card's boost effect. So that is solid. So this is very very cool. So the boost. Remember what the boost effects are. So you can cancel that, and that is very, very solid. I'm looking at you, Ronin, with a lot of your uh, crappy boosts. 
you can really have some fun with Wraith here. So definitely a super powerful. He's a, what's it called again? Uh, what's that stupid card? That preparation there that does the same thing. Is it a target acquired? Is it target acquired? After a boost card is turned face up and cancel that coup's boost ability. There you go. I don't know if the boost ability and the boost, yeah, the boost effect. Yeah, it's gonna can. It's a target acquired on a on a on a on an ally. There you go. Target acquired on an ally, man. What can you want? And you can do it three times. Man, that is super solid. Ronin stick is never coming out, so that's very cool. As long as it's a boost there, and it's turned faced up. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be in front of you. So that's really really solid. So even if it's be for somebody else, you can cancel that with wraith. Very, very solid ally. Can help with a lot of control. Rate definitely a top tier ally right now. And then we got Mr. Venom. So Venom is a four cost. He's expensive. Four cost ally, Flash Thompson. He's got two thwart for two consequence damage. Three attack with two consequence damage. He is a guardian with four health. But while there is no threat on the main scheme, we can reduce all of the consequential damage from Venom takes by one. So now he's only taking one and one as long as you've done your justice job and keep the main at zero. So pretty expensive ally, but considering that he can twerk for two, attack for three, and if you kept the main, he can do that four times. Uh, he's definitely an ally that you want to keep on the table. Uh, super strong. He's stronger than most heroes. So <laughs> very, very good ally. Venom. So we got some really strong justice cards now uh, in the in the pool, which is cool. And then finally, uh, I'm only talking about the new cards. I'm not going into the rest of the stuff that we've already seen, uh, just to keep the videos a little bit shorter. We're talking about Daughter of Thanos. Uh, so one cost event, it's a team up card. So you have to have somebody playing Gamora and it, the team ups only work if you have the ally or the hero. It doesn't work if the minion Gamora is in play. Uh, all right, so if you're trying to be cheeky, it only works for the ally or uh, the ally or the other hero that is Gamora. And it says team up max one per deck. And what's fun about it is Gamora and Nebula. They're Gamora and Nebula on both sides. Uh, but again, you have to be a hero action to play. So it doesn't matter if you're the other person's an alter ego. As long as you're in hero form when you play this, you're good to draw three cards. So again, it's two to draw three, so it's not, it costs one plus a resource, unless you have a resource generator like Nebula Ship, where then it actually nets you a card, uh, nets you two cards, but still, it's good. <laughs> it's still good, it's draw three cards, it gives you a lot, of, a lot more options. All right, so that is for her hero kit, stop! And now we have the cards that are presented uh, from her pack. And I think, I think this is one of the most solid equipment cards here. Uh, the last one we had was what, Enraged in Aggression, which was just giving a plus two and then dealing extra co consequential damage. And now we get this, which is incredibly powerful. Unfortunately, it can only be equipped to uh, Guardian Allies. But it is the energy spear, one cost upgrade. Energy spear is a weapon attached to a guardian ally, max ones per ally, obviously. Attach ally gets plus two attack and it's attacks gain piercing. <gasps> piercing, oh jeez. Tough is gone, this is so good. So, so solid. One cost, uh, a lot of people have been playing it with bug because if you attack with bug, you can heal him. So. You bug attacks for three uh, with piercing every turn. Jesus, super solid. So yeah, so Energy Spear is definitely a great new upgrade for a lot of our aggression allies, especially if you're playing a Guardian character. There's a card that we're gonna reveal in just the two seconds, uh, which is basically Honorary Avenger for Guardians. Uh, and then you can play that on any ally, even if they're an Avenger or something like that. So I'm looking at allies like Brawn, uh, putting an energy spear in a, a thing. Braun has five health. Now it's three piercing and removes a threat. Man, there's so many combos with some very powerful allies that you can do with this. So definitely, definitely a card uh, that we will see a lot of play. 
in the future decks. Uh, second one, this one's a little weird. A lot of people are not, I don't know a lot of people. I I think it's okay. I think it's a it's a fun uh, it's a fun little card. I'm I'm still trying to figure out where I want to run it, but uh, it's a one cost support called Defensive Training. It's a condition max two per deck, so it uses two counters, uh, two training counters, and it says Alter Ego Action. Exhaust this card and remove a training counter from it. Choose a protection event in your deck, a green one. So it has to be a green protection. So it can't be anything. Uh, and discard pile and shuffle it into your deck. Now, where I see this uh, this going is um, basically, you know, you're going to your deck. You need to flip an alter ego, and then you need that uh, the tackle. You know, you want to stun the villain next turn. All right, all right I'll get tackle in, or I'll, I'll go and shuffle back in. Let's say sidestep or um, whatever the, the other good uh, protection cards that you can you can think of or whatever you need. Muster Courage. Man, I, I love this with Muster Courage. I'm like, okay, so I'll go Muster Courage, flip back up. And there, it's not, you don't have to be a guardian. It's just basically get some stuff. All these ally, uh, sorry, all these heroes that like to flip up and down. So you get to shuffle a couple of good cards into your deck back and forth. So the, the cards you want is good. So choose a protection green event. So it's, it can be an attack, a defense. As long as it's a green card, you're good. So, you know, you, you like the uh, hard knocks, perfect. You know, kill the dude, get a tough, done. Uh, all, the, all these good cards you can just recycle. So I do like this card a lot. Uh, I just need to figure out what heroes it's going to fit the best in. Because it won't fit for every hero, but it is going to fit for a few heroes. And it's definitely going to be worth putting at least one in a deck that's running protection. Finally, oh, now we got another sweet combo card. So this is Guardians of the Galaxy. Two cost support. It is a team card. So we had the Mighty Avengers for the Avengers. And now we have Guardians of the Galaxy. Two cost support. It is a team card. Play under any player's control. Max one team card per uh, character or per player. And then if each of your characters has the Guardian trait, uh, this card gains response after you play an upgrade on an ally draw a card so this is it can go you there's no restriction it's not once per turn if you have five upgrades and you can play five upgrades then you are just drawing five extra cards so this is super super solid for uh, the guardians now the condition is every character has to be a guardians of the galaxy which Again, if you're an alter ego, it's not going to work because you're not a guardian unless you have the next card we're going to talk about in a minute. But yeah, so that is super solid, especially with Star Lord and putting all and so the Star Lord leadership deck with all the upgrades. Uh, Brant from the portal. Uh, me and him were talking about one of the decks with Nebula, which is like just uh, use and abuse, just discarding cards and just putting uh, putting allies out and in leadership and just putting weapons on anything and anyone just to get more card draw and then boost our allies, which again is a super solid strategy in itself. Uh, and there you go. So Guardians of Galaxy, definitely a fun uh, support card uh, for the pool. And it's another new strategy for leadership because now uh, Guardians upgrades is a thing where you can just draw tons of cards, put the Guardians and just keep playing this on a loop. And then in the final card that we are going to present to you today is honorary guardian zero cost upgrade can only play if you have a guardian trait and then you attach to a friendly character max once per character and then the attached character gets plus one hit point and gains the guardian trait so a cool combo again here is to play this on yourself so you are now a guardian both in alter ego and then you can kind of combo off with this card as well all right so now let's take a look at her nemesis cards and her obligation all right, let's take a look here at the obligation inferiority complex, which is kind of thematic. I like it. Uh, obligation, give to the nebula player. You may flip to alter ego form and choose. You can exhaust your alter ego and remove this from the game, which is the standard one. Or you can choose and discard two technique upgrades you control. But if no upgrades were discarded this way, this card gains surge and discard this obligation. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, little jealousy here. I, I like it. I think it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty fun one uh, as a uh, as an obligation. Like I said, it's very thematic and it fits 
FFG has always done super nice work here with these nice obligations. All right. Uh, let's see. Gamora. All right. So if you are like me and you see your shadow of the past almost every game, this is what's coming out to see you in the in Miss Gamora. She has six health. Jeez. She is a two scheme, two attack elite outlaw. Gamora. She has a force interrupt. When this minion would enter play, discard the Gamora ally from play. So this is something that's really interesting here and a lot of people are not sure how this works. So let's say she comes out, your Gamora is not in play. Uh, you cannot play Gamora on your side because uh, then she can't enter play because there's already the Gamora. So you have to get rid of the Gamora uh, uh, nemesis before you can play your Gamora ally because it would be too cheaty to just play your Gamora and then she goes away. So that doesn't work like that. You really got to get rid of it because uh, there can only be one Gamora in play. So that's the same rule for the Nick Fury rule. Uh, just so you don't, if you don't know, now you know. All right, here we go. And then she has a force response. After Gamora attacks and damages you, choose and discard an upgrade you control. So that's kind of annoying. So if she damages you, uh, it, you're going to discard your stuff. And then the side scheme, self-preservation. It gives Nebula gets minus one thwart attack and defense and Gamora gets plus one attack and her attacks gain piercing and that has two per player, uh, two boosts. So it's not uh, it's not super fun <laughs> when that happens to you. It just like reduces all your stats. Uh, but it's very easy to get rid of. It's only two per player so it's not the worst. It's not like the Gamora one where only Gamora can remove the threat from it. So, so this one's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, the six six health Gamora ally is kind of annoying uh, with the piercing and three boost icons as well. Pretty solid here. Uh, aside from that, uh, she is coming also with a lethal weapon. It is an attachment weapon attached to Gamora if you cannot attach to the villain. Now, fun thing here. If you uh, have the a Gamora ally in play you will attach this to the Gamora ally. If you have the Gamora hero in play, you will attach this to the Gamora hero in play. So that is very, very cool. Uh, it's kind of weird the way it works, but yeah, it it works. So attach to Gamora if you cannot attach to the villain. Hero action, discard an upgrade you control, discard this attachment, and it gives plus one attack. So again, super cool. If uh, those are kind of the, the cool synergies you can kind of play when you're playing two players. Uh, if if you are unlucky and get your uh, lethal weapon. And also if you're playing the hero, uh, Gamora, she cannot enter play. So your Shadows of Past is also going to surge. All right, so there you go. So she's got her sword and then she's got this. So a couple of, a couple of fun things here. And again, if you're playing with the Gamora ally, uh, hero, Gamora gets plus one attack and piercing. Uh, <laughs> that's super solid. So this is kind of weird where you like, oh, well, maybe Nebula will take that minus one, minus one to be able to give like hero Gamora plus two and piercing. Who knows like how you want to play it, but it's something that can be done because yeah. And then finally, there's two copies of old rivals. When revealed, Gamora attacks you. And if no attack was made this way, the card gains surge. If the Gamora hero or ally is in play, she resolves her attack against you without exhausting. So there you go. You can just get backstabbed from the other hero uh, out of the blue for old rivals. So again, so not too bad a Nemesis card. Um, Nemesis says set. It's again, it can it can be like double edged where you can play it uh, on. If you can play with the Gamora hero and that, and it can be really fun to see the interactions that. And the shenanigans that that leads up to. All in all, I think Nebula is super strong. I have a bunch of deck ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you uh, after this uh, this little video. So, and then we'll play them out. I'll do like the same thing I did with Spectrum and Adam Warlock. I'll just build a bunch of decks and just play. And if it'll give you at least some inspiration on what you can do with these fine characters. But definitely, Aggro uh, is going to be really fun. I'm going to definitely lean into these. Uh, Gamora gains, uh, not Gamora, uh, Nebula gains uh, piercing and overkill with the Cutthroat Ambition. Definitely going to be building a deck that's going to resolve, that's going to really 
uh, have an, if, an impact with this card. All right, guys, so that is it. Uh, give me two seconds, I'll make some decks and we'll talk about it in a few. All right, guys, check it out. All right, guys, so welcome back. So it is time to talk about our deck builds and we're gonna do it with aggression. And now what we're gonna do with aggression, like I said before, I really, really want to focus a deck around Cutthroat Ambition. So this is going to be my good, my, my card I want to focus on because while she's in hero form, her attacks gain piercing and overkill. So this is really the one we really want to build off. All right, now to complement that, so let's take a look at a little bit what we want to do. All right, so the events that we really want to showcase here are Melee, because if we do have overkill and piercing, that is going to be really, really fun. Because then we can punch two things, overkill, piercing. Uh, same thing for relentless assault. That kind of does it on its own. So it's not something we really want to focus on. Looking for trouble is going to help us with ma na maintaining threat on the main scheme. And it's also going to find us minions that we can actually overkill and, and do other stuff with. The one we really want to focus on is the toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So we have that minion attack us, and then we deal the five damage with overkill and piercing. And so it goes through the boss. And I think it's I think these are pretty fun, like, like little gimmicks there. And then obviously some into the phrase, uh, which is just gonna deal a massive amount of damage with the overkill. Now I was debating on putting uh, a bunch of follow-throughs in the deck in. Maybe I'll see if I play it and I really like it. Maybe I will go that route at some point and maybe add some. It's definitely something like I could definitely add right away uh, and just focus on, let's say, the the into the phrase and, and the toe to toes and then just add just add the three uh, follow throughs. But then I'm, again, I'm going to have a deck with about 43 cards, which is not that bad. But if we wanted to run probably smoother, uh, we're going to stick to 40, but definitely into the phrase. Uh, if you want to put one in or two in, it, it's not probably not a bad idea. Uh, and then uh, to help pay for all this stuff, uh, we're running the, the triple resources here and then the two doubles. So five double resources uh, in the deck for red because uh, we do have a bunch of cards that we want to play in the red. Uh, one is Hall of Heroes because we should be killing a bunch of minions and martial prowess and then when we flip down we can actually draw five cards from playing a prep and drawing an extra three cards from a tech sorry not a prep a technique so that's going to help us out as well so we have our events we have our resources up high and then we have our support cards uh we're going to be playing nowhere because again there's a lot of guardians uh that we can play so that's again more card draw uh, once we have nowhere and an extra ally, the allies are going to be there because Nebula doesn't really want to take the hits unless she uh, she has to. Uh, so we're going to take care of that. We're going to play team building exercise to make our allies cheaper. And we got daughter of Thanos. And then we got a whole bunch of super friends. So obviously Angela, she fetches a minion, which kind of goes with our synergy. She's free. If I have nowhere, she's actually drawing me a card. So she's super free. Uh, she's actually zero. Uh, Marvel Boy, who's just the attack of two, and then I can also have the piercing and ranged, which could be interesting. Obviously, Superbug, Cosmo, Martin X, and Groot. Again, Groot is a good defender. He's just can he can just take a massive amount of damage. Again, uh, this deck is going to be really focused on Cutthroat Ambition. And again, if it doesn't, if I don't have it, it doesn't matter. It's all powerful stuff so nebula can really really dish out the damage quick find all of her events and then just kind of play whatever is uh good at the moment and again i i really think that we could add maybe one of the um follow-throughs in this deck and it's it would still be okay uh if there's anything i would cut i would maybe cut relentless assault to add that one you know what let's just do it We'll just kill the Relentless Assault. And then we'll uh, actually, we'll keep the Relentless Assault. We'll kill the melee. There you go. So we're going to keep one of this. So when we follow through, we'll keep this. And we'll kill melee. Because this one's cheaper. It's, it can actually be a one for one card. Which I kind of like. Alright, here we go. So we'll kill that like that. 
and then we'll just leave it like that. And there you go. We have ourselves a nice 40 card deck. 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have a total of six allies in our deck. Oh, wait, seven allies. 2, 4, 6, yeah. So seven allies in our deck, including Nebula, uh, including Gamora. So this should be pretty fun. And again, I'll, I don't know. I'll, I'll pick a scenario. I'll find something fun to play and, and see how that goes. With the overkill, just maybe Zola. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll, I'll pick this deck and I'll fight uh, Expert Zola, which should, be, which should be fun. And we got all the stuff that goes down too. So yeah, it should be pretty interesting combat. So uh, Nebula versus Zola in aggression coming up. Actually, it's not going to be coming up because I'm I'm going to make all these little videos about these deck ideas. And then tomorrow I'll play them. There you go. Because it's, yeah, it's 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, I'm not starting a campaign with Nebula uh, like that. But we, we will find some other things to do. All right, so let's check out a uh, protection idea that we had for her, which seems pretty interesting as well. All right. All right, guys, for this next deck, again, I want to keep on the theme of focusing on uh, some of her... Uh, uh, some of her techniques to really focus a deck around. And this one is going to be Weapons Master and Wide Stand. So we're going to cheat it up a little bit. We're going to take two of them. So this gives her Retaliate, and this one reduces the damage taken. So for this deck, I really want to be able to stay in hero form as much as possible, uh, playing some techniques, uh, really focusing on uh having maximum health and really dealing damage without ever having to attack so this is going to be a uh, kind of interesting deck here that we want to build all right so without ever having to attack we are going to be running uh, three double resources and one double uh to make sure that we have enough health to be able to trigger a couple of cards that goes well with this we have the honorary guardian that we're going to put on ourselves and the endurance and then we're definitely going to be wanting to play a Dauntless. So this is going to give us a possibility of re Retaliate 2 uh, for a couple points. But we're just, as long as we're dealing damage when the villain is attacking us, the thing is we never want to defend. This is not going to be a defense deck. This is going to be, I'm going to mitigate as much damage as possible. So to also things that mitigate damage are going to be these booster boots. So... Max once, and if I would take any amount of damage, I can reduce it. And then more damage reducers are going to be the energy barriers. So we're going to run three copies of that. Again, all this is just like, it's kind of be like a war of attrition where we're just going to be preventing as much damage and redirecting as much damage as possible. All right. So again, if we happen to take damage, uh, we want to be well prepared. So we have two shakes it off. So after we take damage, bam, all right, we will shake it off, get a tough status card. And if that's not enough status, st <laughs> tough status cards, uh, if we do get to flip down and flip back up, we will get another tough status card. Plus uh, the other uh, technique that gives us a tough status card. So we should be tough almost all the time. Like we should be a tough cookie to crack. But just in case we, uh, we need more tough, we're running two hard knocks uh, to make sure that we can punch something in the face and get a tough status card when we take it out. All right, aside from that, uh, since we're going to be staying in hero form most of the time, we want to make sure that we can draw a couple more cards. So we're going to be running three assess the situations uh, just to make sure that we can get that plus one hand size uh, since we're not going to be wanting to flip down because our only threat control is going to be ourselves and the cutthroat ambitions and that's again we it should be enough but just in case it's not enough uh staying in hero form is really going to prevent that now if it gets really really scary then we also have two get behind me's uh to do a couple of uh, counter spells or counter magic and just get attacked since we are going to be tough most of the time i think it's uh it's only good to be playing this again we're going to be spending most of our game in hero form and we'll be playing cards like Get Behind Me. Aside from that, uh, the odd times that we do have to go down, we are going to be running one defensive training because uh, then I can go get my Hard Knocks, I can go get Perseverance, shuffle that back in. Uh, and then we also have a Second Wind uh, just to be able to make sure that we stay healthy 
and we can always trigger our Dauntless. And then finally, we have one ally that we're going to add, which is Starhawk. Uh, again, he's just good. <laughs> he's good. I, I was thinking of adding Martyr and the other one for more tough effects. And I was like, eh, we're good. We're good. Because there's this whole combo what you can do with Martyr. You, you put the, uh, you, you kind of finish, you put all the, the little dudes at one. And then she blocks the boss. And then you can heal her with the med team. So she stays around kind of forever. Uh, but I was like, eh, do I want to do that? I could do that. Because it's definitely not a bad combo. The med team with Martyr, as, as long as she's killing something, you're good. Now with Adam Warlock, now that's something to explore. But uh, again, med team, that chick, boot camp, energy spear. Just like, oh my god, yeah, that's true. You could just kind of go crazy with that. All right, anyway, so this is about Nebula. It's not about Adam Warlock. I should have thought about that last week when I did my videos with Adam Warlock. But anyway, like I said, inspiration comes when you when you try to deck build and find new creative ways to do stuff. All right, so this is the deck uh with 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 this and i don't know what i'm gonna fight i'm gonna think about something and i'll fight something that's gonna be interesting again expert mode with uh something that's gonna counterbalance what i'm trying to do all right so i'll figure that a little bit later a little bit later and then let's move on to a cool justice deck with her and figure out what we want to do stay tuned all right guys for this nebula deck for justice we're gonna be doing an alter ego game so again I want to focus on the card and I'm going to be focused on combat ready. So there's two copies of this in the deck. Uh, and the thing is, it's an alter ego action. Now I want to stay in alter ego almost the entire game. All right. I'm, I'm going to try to flip only maybe once or twice and then try to win the, the game on a super big bursty turn. So again, because I can get to trigger the technique when I get her in, Plus, with Gamora that can trigger a technique, uh, I think I can be able to, if I'm lucky enough, I can get the Confuse, uh, the one that gets the Confuse or Stun, or the whichever one it is that, you know, removes threat or stuff like that. Whichever one it is, it doesn't matter. The Combat Ready will be able to kind of help me uh, maintain my board state and have some fun. And then Gamora can just trigger one of the techniques I have. And it's not a hero response, which is super good. So this is going to these are going to be the cards I'm going to be looking at. Now, for this deck, we are going to be running tons of resources, all right? Because since we are going to be playing an Alter Ego, uh, we're going to always have a bigger hand size, which is going to be great, but we need some resources. So we need two of the powers of, we're getting the three uh, doubles and the other threes. All right, our constant... Threat removal is going to be consisting of triple foiled. So that's really going to keep that down. We're running three counterintelligence. Uh, you're probably, well, Steve, you can only play one. Yes, but I'm going to use it every turn. And then I'm hopefully I can get him back uh, when I play Agent Colson and get some more. After that, we're going to be running three beat cops. Again, this is all stuff that we're going to be running as soon as possible and priority uh, to be able to play our big, big cards and then just put all our techniques. And once we have like six or six or seven of our, our techniques, then we're going to come in and use our lethal intent and just spend our hand and just trigger all of the techniques while we stayed in Alter Ego the entire game, which is going to be just fantabulous. Aside from that, we have under surveillance because again, things can go wrong. <laughs> Uh, Spycraft, just to get rid of something really nasty. Uh, and then we are running an Avengers Mansion. Again, more card draw is going to be crucial here. And then we're going to run, we're running a slew of really good allies. So Quake can kind of slow, make some work out of the minions uh, because she's going to be in, uh, I'm going to be staying in Alter Ego. So Quake can just deal that consistent two damage without ever taking consequence damage. Uh, then we have our friend Eros, where I can just spend mental resources and confuse the minions while I dispose of them in a different way. Quasar comes in. If there's a lot of side schemes, I can just remove threat from all of them. Uh, and then Coulson is going to go fetch me my spycraft, or he's going to go fetch me a counterintelligence. I will bring it back. We got Agent Venom, if everything goes well. Uh, there should never be a, more than one or two threat on the main scheme, so I should be okay. And he can 
you know, keep everything under control. And then we got Nick Fury and Lockjaw again to uh, really tighten the noose on whatever villain we're going to be playing. So again, uh, Kennedy Hawk proposed a deck like that in um, in leadership. I don't think leadership was the way to go for that uh, for that deck. I think injustice, where you have ultimate control over the uh, the scheme uh, with all of these. Uh, threat removal, especially in solo. And I don't think this deck is, is going to be the same uh, as viable in in multiplayer, but between the foils and the counterintelligences and the beat cops, uh, you are you are removing more than your fair share of threat, even in Alter Ego. So I think it still works in multiplayer. But again, only time will tell once we try this deck out. All right, so again, this is a 25, I think it's a 40 card deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So 41 card deck. Uh, but again, <laughs> in a solo game, this is going to be just brutal. It might be a little bit longer. I still don't know who I want to play up against. But again, I, it might be a little bit longer in solo uh, because you want to stay Helter Ego the entire game. But we'll see how that goes. Anyway, so we'll again, we'll face off against something that's going to be challenging enough that it keeps it interesting. And then, yeah, let's see if this deck can uh, really make the cut. And then finally, let's uh, go see our deck in uh, leadership. And that is going to look a lot like the one that me and Brant were talking about, which is disposable weapons. And see how that goes. All right, guys, stay tuned. Coming up. All right, guys, for our final build, uh, we're going to be focusing on another Gamora card, uh, Gamora, <laughs> Nebula card. We're going to focus on one of her cards that was introduced in her kit, which is the Guardians of the Galaxy. And we're going to be running three copies of this. Why? Because this is going to be the root of the deck, and we need to make sure that it comes out early. So this is all about having a team of Guardians and playing upgrades on our Guardians. All right, so... Uh, for our team, so we have tons of stuff that we want to put out. But let's look at our team first of all. We're going to be adding team building exercise and nowhere. Now you're probably wondering, Steve, why are you running three of these? Well, again, it's because we want to make sure that we find it fast and early. Um, the next thing after that, when you when you have extra copies of something, if you can only have once per player, it doesn't matter because you always need resources to pay for other stuff. So it just makes that decision much more easier. And especially that this is going to be the combo piece. This is going to be a crazy draw deck where we're going to have tons of fun with. All right. So uh, these are the allies we're playing. We're obviously all of the Guardian people. Major Victory, Martinex, Drax, Rocket. Yandu, and then we're gonna add one more player. One more player. We're gonna add Iron Man. Now, the reason why I'm, I want to run Iron Man is because his ability that says everything costs one less is just gonna be broken. Because if we have him on the table, and then we have our team's guardian here, and we play our honorary Avenger on him, our honorary guardian on him, the response is still gonna trigger because it's after you play an upgrade and then whoa iron man is now an avenger guardian which will trigger us to draw a card and then we can just drop all of the different upgrades on him and we have the power gloves and the sky cycle which are just for him and then we have the blaster we have well we have two copies of blaster we have two copies of the reinforced man i'm putting out too much two more copies of the suit two copies of the implant, two copies of inspired, and then we got two copies of honorary guardian. So we have tons of upgrade. We have 13 upgrades. There's just one of them that's going up on Nebula to make sure that even in Alter Ego she can be. And this is just gonna be draw fest. So we're just gonna be dropping allies and putting on uh, the, um, the upgrades on some of, it doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter what, we're just putting our allies. Our allies are going to block for us, sacrifice, get sacrificed. And this is, I think, is there a little bit more than 40 cards in this deck? I think so. Uh, that is uh, one, two, three, four, five. As you can see, we are not running any double resources in this deck. Uh, we won't need it. It's just, again, it's, it's super, super powerful. I've played it before. This one, I know it kills. 
and it's just super solid. And that's why you don't even need the double resources, not at all. All right, so we have uh, we have nine allies, so two, four, six, eight with Iron Man, nine with Gamora. So to make sure that one out of every four card is going to be an ally, so that is pretty solid. And then we have the 13 upgrades, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 upgrades, which make sure we always have at least one or two in our hand. And then we have our just our setup cards that we want to find. Again, more card draw, cost reduction for our allies, uh, and then just draw, 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 draw. So this deck is bonkers. So once you once you try this deck out, you're gonna go, you're gonna see like, holy! You think turbo draw is good? This is even better. So this is just bang, bang, bang. It's just so much fun. There's a little bit of setup, of course. Uh, but once this gets going, it's just so much fun. And then when, once you have Iron Man punching for like five or six every turn, or Yondu, uh, you're going to just want to keep maybe those two and everything else. You're just going to want to cycle up uh, as much as you can. And I think I forgot about Groot. I think Groot should be in here as well. Uh, yeah, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 14, 5, 26. Yeah, oh, because I had Groot in another deck. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And and Groot as well. So there you go. So 10 allies. That's what I thought. I was, I was supposed to have 10. So the 10 allies plus... Uh, so this is a 42-card deck, but once you once you go through this, you're going to be decking out almost every other turn. It's that crazy good. All right, so that is it, guys. So those were four decks for Nebula. Uh, again, we're not going to run basics because we're just going to, if we do basics, it's just going to be basics and guardians. So just the, pretty much uh, this setup with a couple of extra double resources. So nothing too uh, impressive. But this is a nice collection of four decks that I really hope you'll enjoy and you'll be able to have fun with and enjoy. So I'm going to be play testing all these decks so you guys can actually see them in action and then make up your mind by yourself. So guys, keep on playing Marvel Champions. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel, share and like. And guys, I hope this Nebula strategy video will help you play Nebula and beat the game. Ciao, ciao.